the project is a uh, three-year research project uh, and really the vision was to see if we can uh, create construction materials uh, which effectively have an ability to heal themselves. So uh, we are following the, uh, the idea of the human body effectively, that when you cut yourself uh, you, you bleed and the bleeding uh, helps heal that particular wound. And our vision is that our construction materials should be able to do something similar. Within the project, there's three universities involved, Cambridge University, Bath University and Cardiff University, and we're the lead institution on the project. Well, the long-term goal is essentially to provide a material that can adapt to a changing environment, to damage that it might suffer through various, various means, and be able to control that damage, to be able to develop itself such that it removes any nasty effects of the damage that's been caused. For example, if a crack, cracks will naturally form in many of these materials, um, but over time that can lead to deterioration. If what we can do, if we can give that material some sort of capability to stop those cracks getting too large, then essentially it means they'll last far longer. I'm looking at using the potential for microorganisms to produce a healing effect in construction materials. Essentially bacteria need food to survive like we all do and these will use a particular type of food called urea which is used in fertilizer. They eat the fertilizer and they produce a chemical environment which causes certain chemicals to precipitate and that's what heals the cracks in concrete, heals the floors. So it's actually very straightforward, you just have to bring the bacteria together with their food and they'll do the rest. We're focusing on the structural performance of these materials and we're looking at large scale healing, particularly to do with shape memory polymers. Now the idea with these is we would embed these materials, which are essentially a plastic, into the concrete, almost like steel reinforcement is put in commonly these days. This would be activated, for example you can heat it or you can electrically activate it. It will essentially return to its original shape. So if it's stretched, it's activated, it returns to its shape. So you'll have a material that can last for a very long time. It, mean, it means it stays safe, so you don't get bridge collapses like you do, for example, recently in the US there's been a number of bridge collapses where lack of maintenance has been said to be an issue. So if we can make these last longer, it'll make things safer, it will save money because your maintenance is reduced, and it can help with various things like carbon emissions and use of materials. So for example, if you build a bridge for 20 years and it'll last 40, you don't have to replace it and cost, that will cost a lot of money. If you can have something that's maintained on its own, then you save money from not having to replace it. Certainly for me, this is an extremely exciting research project. I think we have a great opportunity here to, uh, to be at the forefront of this research, not only in the UK, but in, in Europe and around the world. We're extremely optimistic about how well this is going to work. Essentially, all the techniques that we're using, they've all, the majority of them have all been demonstrated in the lab and to a certain extent in the field as well. So we're confident that they can work on their own. One of the major things we're looking for is to bring them together so they work at the very, very small scale, the very, very large scale, and over long time scales as well. So we know they all work individually. Our challenge is to bring them all together and then try to get them to work in concert with one another over the space, different spatial scales and over the different time scales.